Welcome back, Hampshire chemistry students. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at reaching our goal of I can rearrange equations to find the delta H of a reaction using what's called Hess's law. So Hess's law refers to a very specific law in chemistry that talks about the delta H of reaction. Specifically, it says the delta H of an overall reaction is same is the same no matter the path that reaction takes. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at examples of reactions that have multiple different steps and how we can better understand those multiple different steps through their delta H's. So I like to, to consider this an analogy of like looking at a map. So this is a map of Hampshire, and it's a little small, but we have over here Hampshire Elementary School. Let's say I was going to go hang out over there and hang out with some of the elementary school teachers, and we wanted to go get something to eat. So we go down to Chicken Dip down here. Now you could take the most direct path, right? And there are multiple different turns we have to make in order to get to chicken dip. But we have other options, right? There are lots of different pathways I could take. I could instead take a path that goes all the way over this way. And then again, eventually ends up over at chicken dip. Okay? Or I could go way out of my way go like up here, go down here because I feel like I could double back, right? You can see that these paths all can be, we can take many different ways to where it gets where we want to go. But what stays the same is the starting point and the ending point, right? This is what it means by the path doesn't matter, right? I'm still starting at Hampshire Elementary School. I'm still ending at Chicken Dip. And we're going to take a look at scenarios and depend how these different reactions can take these different paths. So let's take a look at a specific reaction together. Let's take a look at a very simple reaction where we're taking some nitrogen, okay, and we're reacting with some oxygen to make some nitrogen monoxide. I want to figure out this delta H of this reaction. I'm going to do this by looking at the two steps that make up a reaction like this one. Okay, there's my first step and here is my second step. Okay, you can see that both of these equations okay, involve, are, we know they're delta H's. Okay, and we contain many of the same chemicals. I want to somehow rearrange these two in order to create this reaction. What I like to do then is I like to pick out my various different reactants so and my various different products. So you can see that nitrogen N2 exists on the reactant side of our first reaction. And in step one, we also have nitrogen in its reactant spot. That is a good sign. And that means I'm probably not going to have to do anything to this reaction. I can leave it alone. When I go to look for oxygens, though, things get a little bit trickier because they're not just in step two. Oh, not just in step one, but they are also in step two. So, uh-oh, we're going to have to think carefully about those as we're going through them. And then the last react product that I'm interested in here is the nitrogen monoxide. And this is where I start to get my first big clue that, ooh, look at this. Nitrogen monoxide is a, re is a product in our overall reaction, but is only a reactant in its second step. That tells me that I have to go ahead and rearrange my equation. I want this N2 on the other side. I want things flipped around. So we, thankfully, we can do that. A chemi chemical reactions can move in multiple different ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very simply reverse this reaction. So you can see what's happening here that I start with nitrogen monoxide and oxygen. Those are now going to become my products. And my product, my nitrogen dioxide, is going to be my new reactant. So I can replace this reaction with the second one that has now been reversed. Now the question is, though, what is my new delta H? So we have to think about some very, follow some very simple rules for how we can rearrange and change a delta H. When I change a reaction, I therefore must change its delta H. So our very first step that we're going to take a look at here is that when you reverse the direction of a reaction, you must multiply the delta H by a factor of negative 1, meaning that any positives will become negatives and negatives will become positives. So when I go to write my delta H here, we can look back and see that we started with negative 113.2. I'm very simply going to multiply that 
by negative 1. So it's going to become positive 113.2 kilojoules. So I want to take these two reactions that have now been successfully flipped for me. Right? You can see now that the nitrogen monoxides line up on both sides. And oh, hey, we still have those oxygens to consider. Don't worry, we'll take a look at those in a second. Uh, you can see boom, 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 that what I want to do now is I want to add my two different reactions together. My first step and my second step can get combined. You can see that I took my N2 plus my two O2s, that's these guys, and I added it with the reactants of my new one, my two NO2s. Okay. And then the same thing on this side, two NO2s and my nitrogen monoxides and my oxygens. And what I can do now is I can cancel some things. My goal is that if I cancel out everything on this side, I should equal this original reaction. So let's take a look. Right off the bat, you might have noticed that I didn't underline things like my nitrogen dioxides. And that's because it's not part of my overall reaction. And we can see why now, because I start having two nitrogen dioxides on this side and two nitrogen dioxides on this side. These guys can get canceled out. So then, what about those oxygens? Because okay, you can see, we really only start with one oxygen, not two oxygens. And that has to do with a little bit of canceling. Okay, I have two oxygen on the left and one oxygen on the right. So what that tells me is that this oxygen is going to get canceled away. And not both of these, but simply one of my oxygens here is going to get canceled away. And you can see now that we are overall, we are left with our overall reaction. I'll bring it down here so we can compare. N2, one O2, no dioxides, and one nitrogen monoxide. So my final question then is to figure out, hey, what is my overall delta H? And this is very simply done by adding up the two delta H's of the reactions that we changed, right? We reversed this, this second one. So I'm going to take 67.6 kilojoules plus the positive 113.2 kilojoules for my second reaction. Mr. Bartlett doesn't have his calculator with him. Thankfully, it's over here. And the Mac. So we can go ahead and figure out our overall delta H of our reaction, 67.6 plus 113.2. I get 180.8 kilojoules. So this reaction overall will create this much energy. It will be an endothermic reaction overall. So, phew! And we've got a lot of different things to think about here. Okay, but really, these just come down to puzzles. We need to think about how are we flipping things, how are we moving things. Let's take a look at one more example, one that's maybe a little bit more complex, because you can see here we only had two steps in this reaction. Let's take a look at one where we have not just two, but three whole steps. Our overall reaction we're trying to make is the 2C plus H2 goes to make C2H2. And we have our three different steps. Okay. Why don't you pause right now, make sure you get this guy written down, and try it out. Can you figure out what's going to happen? Okay, we'll come back in three, two, one. Let's break it down. Okay, I've got carbons. These carbons look good, right? I have two carbons on the left. Okay, I have hydrogens. Okay, I'm definitely going to want to have a hydrogen being set up. I have C2H2s. Let's use, in this case, let's do orange again. Okay. Now you'll notice that there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be end up canceling out in, this, in these reactions overall. And what I'm going to notice right off the bat is just like we had on the front, we are going to need to reverse this first reaction. And then also, right, because we have C2H2 on the right, but it is only on the left in this case. I do notice one weird thing about the carbons. It is on the correct side in both of our reactions, but it is not the same amount. I have only one carbon on this side. So what that means is I'm going to need to do one other type of manipulation here. And that, whereas our second rule for delta H changing comes into play. 
right? If, I, if I, I'm going to want to multiply or divide a reaction, and it's going to require us to do the same thing to that reaction's delta H. So our new steps are going to look a little something like this. And my first step needs to be flipped and reversed like we did in the first one. My second one here is going to need to be multiplied by 2. That way I will match the two carbons at the top. So our new steps are going to look a little bit like this. You can see that our two carbons now match our two carbons that we're starting with. And our two C2H2s now are on the correct side. So we then need to make sure that everything else cancels. Okay? You could write the overall reaction again, but I'm just going to go ahead and go through and start to look for things that are going to be on the same on both sides. So here I have two CO2s that's going to cancel with these two CO2s. I have some H2Os that is on the H2O on the left and hey look there's an H2O on the right so those are going to go away. And then finally I have oh this is tricky right we've got some high some uh, we've got some fractions with our oxygens this can sometimes happen when you look at enthalpies. I have one half oxygen here and I have two oxygens here. What I'll notice, and remember you think of your fractions here, is that two, if it was in the setup of one half, I could write this as four over two. And hey, look, four over two, one over two, those two together, because they're on the same side, they will add up, will subtract and cancel with the five over two on this side. So four over two, one over two, cancels out with five over two. And if you look at our final overall reaction, I have two C2, C, two C's, one H2 and one C2H2. So because we did our, our manipulation here, right, when I flipped my delta H, I changed it from negative to positive. I had the negative two nine, three nine four, and I multiplied that by two to give me negative two eight eight. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add up all of my delta H's for my overall reaction. Very simply, just by typing all these numbers that I manipulated in my calculator. 1300 plus negative 788 plus negative 286. And my overall reaction again ends up being endothermic, but it ends up our total for all of our different steps. These take time. They take a little bit of manipulation. I recommend doing what I did and setting up some colors to help you better see what each step is looking like. I try a few of these out on our homework, and we'll come back together and discuss more examples going forward. Thank you guys so much for working, and have a great rest of your day.